Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2021 movie, The Mutation. It's time to recall. Let's get started, turn on subtitles, and spoilers ahead. The movie begins with a scientist doing a synthetic experiment in his lab. We see a big rat in a cage. It's a strange rat. The rat has changed its features because of the experiments being performed upon it, and now it looks like a human being. The scene changes. We see the scientist and his wife, Linda. The scientist speaks with his wife about his work. Here we find that Linda was a doctor who was unhappy with her husband because he occasionally seems unconcerned about Linda due to his work. In the meantime, Linda gets a call from the hospital so she has to leave. After she has departed, her husband enters the lab as it is near his house. The rat wasn't in the cage when he got there, which shocks him. He is astonished when he observes this and pulls out a weapon. The rat appears out of nowhere, the size of a person. The scientist attempts to calm him after putting his pistol away due to the rat's ferocious appearance. Eventually, he gets brutally murdered by the rat. The scene shifts to a couple. Alan is the husband who is a geologist, and their marriage is deteriorating. As a result, the wife divorced Alan and relocated. Later, when the scientist is deaf, Alan arrives at Linda's resident with his assistant, Julie. The police had summoned them to aid them in their inquiry. A female sergeant claims that she does not believe this scientist was killed by a human. According to the senior officer, Linda learned about her husband's death when she returned from the hospital. After hearing this, they make their way to the scientist's laboratory. They come across the scientist's lifeless body. After cruelly devouring his body, the rat has wrecked it. After witnessing the awful state of the deceased, Julie grows anxious and walks out of the room. When the senior officer saw the body, he stated, I suppose so, and he was slain by a bear or a wild animal. Alan proclaims that bears cannot enter the city upon hearing this, and wild cats dislike living with people. He claims that he may provide ideas after he collects the samples. Meanwhile, Linda reports that she was in the hospital all night. Linda was sneezing as she spoke. As a result, the officer becomes suspicious of her. The officer suspects that Linda is hiding something from them. The senior officer informs Linda that Alan wishes to collect a sample of her outfit. Linda agrees to give the samples. After handing Lisa the card, the senior officer says, please contact me if you have any other information. Following his departure, Alan informs the senior officer that he feels Linda is horrified by her husband's death. He believes she has nothing to conceal from them. According to the senior officer, he has discovered numerous scattered files alongside the scientist's dead corpse of the crime scene, which might lead one to assume that those files were dispersed by Linda to locate anything, and she is surely concealing something from them. In the following scene, a girl is seen carrying trash to the trash can. Meanwhile, she notices an odd noise coming from behind her. When she looks behind, she spots the enormous rat. The girl makes many attempts to flee, but she collapses while running. The rat strikes her and brutally kills her. Linda phones Alan late at night to tell him she knows something about the case and would like to share it with him. That's why she calls Alan, and Linda walks him to the lab. Once he arrives, she tells him that she discovered some chemicals when she came that night. She goes on to say that her husband has never let her attend his lab. Alan believes that instead of him, she should have told the police everything. Later, Alan begins to examine these substances. On the site, he finds the formation of harmonics, a radioactive substance. Linda claims that her husband used to conduct research on rats and rabbits at this laboratory. Later, Alan takes pictures of the surroundings, and Linda invites him into her house. Alan observes Linda's mother's photo as they begin to drink. Alan begins to ask Linda about her. Linda's mother died a long time ago. After all, she was a cancer patient. By all means, I'm prepared to accompany you on this case, Linda tells him. She starts later asking Alan about his wife. Alan claims that now that they are divorced, they live apart from one another. When Alan reached the police station the next day, the senior officer and sergeant inform him about the girl. A big rat murdered the girl last night. According to the police, the girl, like the scientist, was slain. Alan tells them that he went to Linda's residence the night before. He discovered there that her husband experimented on rats in his laboratory. It's conceivable that the failure was caused by an issue with the experiment. The rat might transform into a creature. The rat may have taken the scientists and the girls' lives. The senior officer lashes out at Alan and asks him why he went to Linda's house without telling anyone. As she was one of a suspect for it all, she almost certainly is behind it all. Alan proposes that they put the city under lockdown. As a result, they should be able to capture the enormous beast. When the police hear this, he adds, No, we can't shut down the city. They know nothing about the species and have no evidence. People would be afraid and there would be chaos all around. A giant rat wandering the streets will frighten people. Alan later comes to Linda's house again with his assistant Julie. 
He tries to warn her about the large rat. Alan starts entering the house on his own. Linda was not to be found in the home. Meanwhile, he dials Linda's phone and learns that she is not at home. She went somewhere else. After leaving the house, Alan hears a noise from the room upstairs. While Linda is on the phone, he informs her that something is at her house. Alan walks into the room after retrieving his weapon. The rat approaches and knocks him down. Alan flees the room after injuring himself with the creature's long nails while kneading his back. He immediately goes out with Julie. Both emerge at the hospital later, and the cops start looking for Alan. How did he get so badly hurt? Alan claims that a big rat attacked him there. It was around the size of a bear. He assumes that the rat considers the residence its own. Now they must investigate how he was created and how he got to be so massive. How might it be taken down? The senior officer tells them they have 24 hours to apprehend it and bring it to justice. Later, the senior officer calls Alan and asks him to devote all of his time and attention to this case. He tells him not to worry about anything else. Linda subsequently comes to the hospital to meet him and inquire about his condition. Linda warns him that if he goes into the house, the rat will attack and kill him. After hearing this, Alan brings her to his house. On the other side, we see a girl going to a mechanic to get her car fixed. Because he was alone in his garage, he had to go fix her car. The rat walked in as the mechanic was working on the car. The rat kills the mechanic after assaulting him. The girl has no idea what was happening outside because she was in his cabin. Her foot is caught when she returns to her car. She then observes the rat devouring the lifeless corpse of the mechanic. The girl is scared by what she sees and starts to run. The rat goes after her and corners her and is devouring her legs. During this period, the female smacks it with the hammer. The rat begins eating her hands and eventually finishes eating the girl. While Alan is at home the next day, he is summoned to the senior officer's office. He informs Alan that the rat ate a mechanic and a female the night before. Alan claims he has previously considered shutting down the city and telling the people about the rat. The officer argues that it is easy to say but tough to do. The problem is currently becoming worse. The case is slipping from our grasp. That is why they send the matter to the FBI. The officer thanks him for his assistance in this case. Alan feels worried after hearing this information about Linda. He tells her everything and tells her that they must all catch the rat together. Later, they both begin to make traps at Linda's house. Julie comes at the same moment and helps them build the trap. The senior officer ate supper with his wife the next day. As the waitress is about to put out the trash, she hears the rat. She isn't paying much attention to him and the garbage can is overflowing. A liquid of some kind begins to fall on her palm as she grabs it. However, as she looked up, she noticed the same rat. The waitress is startled when she sees the rat. When the rat attacks her again, the waitress tries to call out to another kitchen staff member, but he is wearing earbuds and cannot hear her. When he turns around, he sees the rat. He is killed by the rat before he can accomplish anything. So the waitress makes the most of the situation and escapes the kitchen. The rat appears and breaks her neck in front of everyone after following her. The rat assaulted everyone, including a senior officer who was there. He eventually preys on a large number of people, one at a time. The senior officer began shooting him after taking his rifle. His gunshot mistakenly strikes an old lady who walks between them. As a result, the lady died and the officer shot the rat. The bullet, however, had no impact on the rat. The rat attacks the officer and begins to devour his stomach. After a while, the senior officer also died. Alan, on the other hand, is developing a poison to kill the rat at home. Julie returns to her house after leaving them. Linda begins cleaning Alan's bandage once she asks her to. We see the officers at Linda's house late at night. They asked Alan to watch the news on television. According to the reporter, a rat-like monster is prowling the city. It has killed a lot of people, so the authorities have decided to shut down the city. The male sergeant asks Alan if he has any suggestions on how to get rid of the rat. Their senior officer, according to the sergeant, was likewise slain by the rat. The senior officer was a buddy of Alan. Alan has planned a trap for the rat. Alan showed the officers the devices in his vehicle. There were a lot of combat weapons, and Alan stated we were going to shoot the rat because he seeks revenge for the death of his buddy. Meanwhile, they hear the sound of the rat and hurry into the house. Julie returns to assist them. Alan gives Julie a baseball bat and tells her to be ready. Alan now steps out on his own to attract the rat's attention. Linda prohibits him from being alone outside of the home, but he refuses and sends her inside. He instructs her to close it, and he begins. The rat enters the home after assaulting them one by one. Everyone is ruled by the solitary rat. After clutching the officer, the rat tosses him. As a result, he passes out, and the rat now chases Julie. Julie makes her way to the upper story room after evading the rat. The rat is prevented from entering the room because she shuts the door. 
Meanwhile, Alan is listening to the screams from within. As a result, he tries to enter but is thwarted by the room's lock. The rat subsequently notices and follows the female sergeant. The sergeant escapes from the house through a window. Meanwhile, the rat pursues her and follows her. While running through the lab, the sergeant arrives and begins dropping acid on the rat. Meanwhile, we can see that the acid has no impact on him. The sergeant locks himself in his cage and the rat begins to tear it apart. Julie, on the other hand, finds a file at the house. When she reads it, she is taken aback. In contrast, the sergeant begins to hold the knife that has been put near the cage. Meanwhile, the rat attacks her hand and separates it. Meanwhile, Linda comes in and begins shooting the rat right away. The rat is unaffected by these gunshots. Linda immediately exits the building after fleeing. After getting the file, Julie continues her trek to Alan. She subsequently confesses that Linda, not her husband, was the subject of the experiment. She desired to treat her mother in order to aid her mother's recovery from the experiment. But when she applied this chemical to the rat, it changed into a monster. Linda hears their conversation and confronts Alan with the truth. Linda maintains that I only did this because of my mother's treatment. Despite my attempts, I was unable to save her. That is why I created an antidote to ensure that this does not happen to anybody else in the same way it happened to my mother. The antidote has been shown to stop the development of cancer cells in the body. The impact has been reversed since the antidote still lacks something. Later, an officer assaults Linda, knocking her unconscious. Alan, Julie, and the officer are all ordered to leave. He admits the chemical as a gas into the room where the rat was. Meanwhile, Linda, who has come to put a stop to the rat, arrives. The rat, however, kills her after assaulting her. Three of them have now gotten out of the house by avoiding the rat. The chemical makes the rat bigger and more deadly. They feel terrified after seeing him and begin to leave. The officer pulls out his revolver and begins killing the rat, who is now following Alan and Julie. The officer was eventually devoured by the rat. The rat is now chasing Julie and knocking her down. The rat suddenly begins to writhe in anguish. When Alan returns to Julie, he informs her that the drug has caused the rat's cells to expand. As a result, the rat grows in size and this also occurs. The rat grew larger and we witnessed it burst and die as a result of the increasing cell quantity. The blood of the rat splatters all over them, yet they act as if everything is fine and usual. However, on their way home, they begin to hear the noises of enormous rats. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.